The date is the 2nd of May 2007. The world number one and world number two have just made history in an event titled the Battle of Surfaces. In their second ever meeting at an exhibition event, the two players facing off, Roger Federer, the Swiss maestro, and Rafael Nadal, the king of clay. Let's backtrack. <laughs> the build-up to this event was huge. On one side you have Roger Federer in the midst of his dominance over the tour, quickly approaching 200 consecutive weeks at world number one. The start of the season offered a third Australian Open title for him, a 10th Grand Slam title overall. He followed that up with a win in Dubai and a final at Monte Carlo, losing to the King of Clay himself. Rafa, meanwhile, had won the previous two French Opens, winning his 7th Masters event at Indian Wells and 8th at Monte Carlo, beating Federer. He had been ranked number 2 in the world since mid-2005. Many tennis pundits were simply waiting for the Spaniard to make the jump on grass and hard courts, thinking it was almost certain he would take the number one title from Federer. He was already dominating their head-to-head, -head with seven victories to three losses. Both players seem to have only just started their careers, and yet already their rivalry was getting ready to peak. Seeing an opportunity and the numbers rolling in for tennis's new great duo, event organisers, including Pablo de Campo, Argentina's most decorated creative in the advertising space, spent $1.63 million on a court alone for the stars to battle it out. But what made it so expensive? Well, at the time, Federer had enjoyed a four-year dominance at Wimbledon, collecting a 48-match winning streak on grass courts over the past five years. Comparatively, Nadal had enjoyed a 72-match winning streak on clay courts over the past three years, winning his first two slams at Roland Garros. He had 15 titles on clay and Roger 5, with 8 on grass. It was clear these two were showing a dominance on their respective surfaces almost never seen before, and so quite clearly, the obvious answer to the question, what surface should they play on, grass or clay, was both. It took 19 days to prepare, setting up the event in the capital city of Nadal's home of Mallorca. These past few years mark the zenith of Federer's greatness, with Rafa exploding onto the scene as the Wilson Wizard's weakness. This attracted 6,800 spectators and estimations of over 200 million watching on screens around the world. But there was a problem. The imagery is iconic, half the court emblazoned with the classic red clay, offset by the green hue of grass the opposite side of the net. But misfortune struck this classic court as the grass layer was hit by a plague of worms. The night before the event, a new turf was laid down, and luckily, all was well. Each rival began on their favoured surface, with the majority of ball boys sporting the classic no-sleeves Rafa look. The king of dirt took the early lead, the advantage seemingly being in his court. On the clay side, you obviously receive the extra time to react whilst your opponent is rushed by the grass. When switched sides, whilst Rafa may be rushed, he can still cause trouble by flicking the ball up to Fed's backhand but Federer didn't go down without a fight. He fought back, eventually losing the match 5-7, 6-4, 6-7, 10-12 in the tiebreak. Each player received a unique trophy, a miniaturised version of the court, half clay, half grass. Just a few weeks later, Roger Federer claimed his first win over Nadal on clay in the Hamburg final 2-6, love ending an 81-match win streak on clay for Rafa, the longest win streak ever on one surface. And there ends the story of the battle of surfaces. Brilliant. A fitting end 
to a very exciting match. Until 2016. Nine and a half years later, on December 2nd, 2016, the Battle of Surfaces 2 was meant to go underway, this time between two of the top women's players, Gabi Muguruza and Maria Sharapova. Some newer fans of the sport may be surprised by this, as if you search Battle of Surfaces 2, you will find absolutely nothing. In fact, the only thing I could find was a tweet by We Are Tennis, October 24th, with another one day later announcing its cancellation due to an ankle injury on Muguruza's part. A fairly controversial decision anyway, as Sharapova was in the middle of serving her two-year doping ban. It was revealed at the Australian Open of that year. Maria Sharapova tested positive for meldonium, a drug she had been taking for 10 years, of which she claimed was prescribed to her by her doctor to help with an irregular heartbeat and her family history of diabetes. Upon appeal, the two years was reduced to 15 months as she claimed she was not aware of the drug being moved to the banned substance list. This meant she could be back by May of 2017. Her first match back was on the 26th of April in Stuttgart, beating Roberta Vinci and eventually reaching the semi-finals. One of her most tense matches back was against Jeannie Bouchard at Madrid, losing 5-7, 6-2, Bouchard was extremely critical of her, claiming she is a cheater, so to me, I don't think a cheater in any sport should be allowed to play that sport again. It's so unfair to all the other players who do it the right way. Scathing words for someone she used to look up to. But that's a whole other story. The Battle of Surfaces still remains one of the most unique events in all of tennis and all of sport. Perhaps one day soon we can see a rematch between these two great rivals.